Welcome to the day four review of the Farnborough Air Show. I'm Alan Peaford. And I'm Andy Marler. And as the trade show element of the world's largest aerospace trade fair winds down, we look towards Aerospace 4.0 and concerns in the industry that they're not as far ahead as they think they are. But one area that is roaring ahead is the rotary wing. We're going to be looking at helicopters and we're going to be looking too at the unmanned market. Aerospace companies may not be advancing as fast as they think when it comes to harnessing the power of advanced digital technologies such as artificial intelligence, augmented reality and additive manufacturing. I do not think that they're gaining really as much as they think they should be at this point. Uh, some simply are waiting on the sidelines, thinking it's going to come to them and it won't. The consensus view is that the sector must focus on the problems their businesses need to solve with outcome-based thinking, the key to devising a route through the complexity of digital transformation. With this in mind, the industry welcomed the announcement from the Cranfield University this week about a new digital aviation research technology centre. This week we've launched DARTEC. DARTEC is our new £67 million digital aviation research technology centre. It's being done in partnership with business, key players like Talis, players like, like, like Saab. It's going to focus on the key digital enablers around that uh, aviation ecosystem. One area Aerospace 4.0 is making progress in is AI, and we caught up with John Schmidt, the MD at Global Aerospace and Defence of Accenture. We're using AI in a lot of places, and in fact, it, I think it's a groundbreaking technology for helping us deal with how to get more productivity out of our workforce, especially as we look at you know the shortages that we're projecting in STEM candidates. We're also concerned in some areas of the world on how many workforce uh, people we have to even just do manufacturing assembly jobs. So we see AI as a technology that's going to be more of a co-worker, or some people would say co-bot, you know, and helping people get more done faster. But we are seeing examples of how digital technologies are already bringing tangible results to real problems. When the uh, Aya Flada Kochel volcano erupted in 2010, it caused the shutdown of European airspace because the only option we had at the time was to total avoidance. Now we've got the ability to understand more about how those particles can affect the engine and we've not got, without compromising safety, we can actually fly in certain conditions using these kind of techniques. Now there are quite a few unmanned air systems on display here at Farnborough this year and the Takeva has even taken to the air in the flying display. UAV manufacturers showcasing their latest technology this week include Alsai. China's leading UAS producer has launched its new X-Series, including the X-Swift, a high-performance all-electric UAS, and the X-Chimera, a groundbreaking electric VTOL craft. UAVs are increasingly being used for good, and there's one here that aims to help save the polar ice caps. In Greenland, they're going to load the sensor bay, which is here, um, full of scientific atmospheric monitoring equipment um, to measure black carbon in the high atmosphere. And the reason that black carbon in the high atmosphere is so important is that the tiny specks that you get from the black carbon, if they settle on the ice, increase the thermal conductivity of the ice and the ice melts quicker. Rotary Wing has been drawing a lot of attention in the air and on the ground. Bell Helicopters this week announced the 412 EPX, which is a variant of the military UPX program that it's working with Subaru in Japan. Now that will be here in four years time and joining the lineup of the other helicopters we can see here on the Textron stand. Turkey's TAI is looking forward to more international sales for its T129 attack helicopter boosted by the challenging testing that Pakistan put the craft through prior to its recent 30 aircraft order. Visitors to the show have been able to see just how the T129 reacts to those challenges through its breathtaking daily display. So we're talking Futures Day, but sometimes we look back to the past. In 1919, the pioneers of aviation took part in the Great Air Race when they flew from London to Darwin but back to the future. Milton, you're doing it all over again. Alan, we are doing it all over again. This time, November 2019, London to Darwin, four different categories. We're looking for entrants in fuel efficient, hydrogen, hybrid, and of course, electric. Now I'm gonna ask you the question they did 100 years ago. Do you think they'll make it? Of course they're going to. 
The whole aviation world has been waiting to see the brand new Airbus Beluga XL make its inaugural flight. It did it today from Toulouse and was streamed live on screens across the show ground. The Whale in the Sky, which will transport aircraft structures between Airbus facilities, is due to enter into service in 2019 and is designed to move oversized aircraft components. And tomorrow is Futures Day, the opportunity to inspire a new generation for aerospace careers. And we're going to be talking to astronaut Tim Peake, and I tell you, you don't get more inspiring than him. And if you miss that, don't worry, you can catch that. And all our reports, of course, online always at wearefin.com. <laughs>